Hello, my darling Fumi Nation. How are you? <laughs> How are we? My name is Fumi Desaluvold. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, you're so very welcome indeed. Are we living and loving the kaftan? I have worn two kaftans prior from this brand and I absolutely love them because it's colorful, it is free, and it's still very dressy. Let me get up and show you. There we go, my darlings. I absolutely love them and I wear heels with them. I can just take my bag and honey, I am good to go. I am what? I am good to go. And I have also have these two. You've seen me wear this before, love, love, love. And then you see me wear this pink one. So I am kind of addicted, yes. <laughs> Let me start by saying I live and love Fumi Nation. I love you guys so very much. Thank you for reaching out to me from all over, from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat. I haven't been on Snapchat in a long time. You reached out to me there. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so very much for reaching out to me about, about the update of Shanquilla Robinson. I also want to send my sincerest regards to Shanquilla's parents, her family, the community of Charlotte, it's been two years since Shanquilla has passed and I cannot begin to imagine what you all must have been going through. I am so sorry for what happened on the 29th of October in 2022. I also want to extend my regards to the amazing and the phenomenal Sue Ann Robinson, not related, but that's their lawyer, as well as Tamika. They have been the two that have been consistent since this story broke. Ladies and gentlemen, our sisters, our nieces, our nephews, Jealousy is real. And sometimes you will have your so-called friends because they will wear masks and they will come into your life and appear and present themselves, false representation of themselves as friends to get close to you, to rob you, steal from you, harm you, destroy you, destroy your business, anything that they can do, they will do. Never ever underestimate anybody that is envious of you. If somebody is not quick to celebrate you or say congratulations for any milestone that you have achieved, take that as a flag and get out of there. Because you see, what happened to Shanquela, I sincerely believe, was envy. She was a beautiful young girl of 25. She came from a loving family. She had a wonderful career, wonderful businesses, and she could afford a lifestyle that not many would have been able at her age. And that was just the scratch of the surface. Had she lived, I truly believe that she would have soared and thrived beyond anybody's imagination. And when you have that kind of light, friends that you started off together will be envious of you because that's what happened to me. That was why I identified with this story. And on the day that I was going to meet up with these girls, some of them I'd known for years. We modeled together New York. But when I got married, the envy was blatant. Not only did I get married, I got married to somebody who really loved me. And so there were others that were disappointed in their marriages. And they really plotted and planned to destroy me. 
I was literally out the door. And Ula said, Ula called my name. I was, I, it was to, to my back. And he said, Fumi, don't go. I was fired up. I'm not going to deny it. And I thought, I will go there and I will this, that and the third. And I was even predicting that we might get into a physical altercation. But I was prepared for that. But because I was blinded by the disappointment, the anger, the sorrow, a whole bunch of emotions because I loved them. But upon reflection, when I look back, these people were not my friends. But it didn't matter to me. I was just going to go. And Ula said, as I opened the door to step out, Ula said, don't go. You see how I'm looking at you? That's how I looked at him. I came back, I looked at him. And Ula is not a man of many words. And for whatever reason, I decided not to go. Not only did I not go, I didn't let them know I wasn't coming. That was my saving grace. We move on. Fumi Nation came to me in 2022, November, and they kept on talking about Shanquilla Robinson. They sent me links. They wanted me to talk about it. They were persistent. I did watch the videos and I was sick to my stomach. I actually threw up. I, am, I have become an empath, I think, from the second I gave birth. I just, I feel the pain. I physically feel the pain. It actually drains me to the point that I'm not even able to talk about it. I'm too emotional and I, I hurt. I hurt for the family. I hurt for her. For those of you that don't know, Shaquilla Robinson went to Cabo to join other so-called friends there six of them she spoke to her mother she said that they were going to have something to eat i can't remember what it was but they were tacos they were going to have tacos and that was the last time she spoke to her daughter after some time the friends called known as the Cabo Six, to say that Shanquilla wasn't doing well and they suspected alcohol poisoning, even though the doctors or doctor was yet to make their way to the villa where they were staying in Cabo. Needless to say, she died the following day. And the mother, of course, said, what do you mean alcohol poisoning? Just as you guys know, I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I don't do anything but buy makeup and clothes. I think what is very fascinating about this story is how it began to unravel. And it really became very much like some kind of horror show of a film. It was unbelievable that this was real, but it was. Tranquilla was the last child of her mother and the only child of her father. And so the Cabo Six, after some days, came back without Tranquilla. I would not even leave Christina behind if she was unwell. I would change the flight tickets and I would tell Ula, I'm sorry. Christina is unwell. She's unable to fly. I have to stay with her. Um, Shanquilla's mother got a phone call. The person did not divulge their identity. They just said that Shanquilla was beaten up. I am a mother today. I cannot begin to imagine to hear that and then subsequently some days after a video was released onto the internet of which the parent saw their child being beaten and she was nude 
I said it in the first episode that I ever did of Shankwela, that Shankwela was attacked and she was attacked unknowingly because she was in the nude. That they caught her in the nude, whether she was coming for the bathroom, whether she was going swimming, whether she was going to bed, she wasn't dressed. It wasn't as if she was undressed by the Cabo Six, she was already undressed. And so the vulnerability that was already there was what they capitalized and they beat her up. The video was there. Apparently her neck was severely damaged and she was left there for her father to go and subsequently pick her up and prepare her for a funeral. The Cabo Six even passed by the mother's house and dropped Shanquilla's things off. They looked into her eyes and they lied to her. I finally got the courage to do the video. What a lot of you don't know is that that was the fourth video I had done. I was such a mess with tears and everything I said, no, let me film it again. I think I have over a thousand videos on this channel. I promise you, we have filmed over 2,500. A lot of them don't make it for one reason or the other. And a lot of it also is because I get so emotional that I'm not able just to stick with the facts and deliver all the information right away. Shanquilla was buried. I know the power of social media. And I said, I will continue putting out this story. I didn't care. The monstrosity of Shanquela's final moments <sighs> built such a rage inside of me. I couldn't sleep sometimes. And sometimes I would even go and look at Adrian because it's a fear. It's a fear. I saw something on the on Instagram just the other day, I put it up, where it says what my dad, mother will be thinking and what I'm actually doing. And the mother was an ambulance. Oh my God, something's wrong. Ambul That's mothers. That's mothers. And so I aligned with Shankwela's mother, Miss Salamandra. And I said, we will get justice for your daughter. The most shocking thing happened was when the body came back and the FBI said there was not enough evidence to bring the Cabo Six to justice. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I cross-checked. I had, I got friends out in Charlotte how are you, my darlings? I had friends out in Charlotte. I had news people out there as well to keep me abreast. And I said, what's going on? I don't understand. And that was how we were just frozen in time. Shankwela is going to be 27 in January. Shankwela has her family, her mother, her father, who wake up every day to one thing or the other that reminds them of Shankwila. That they will have to really deep dive into anything to keep them occupied so that this nightmare does not send them over the edge. You can imagine living like that. Her birthdays, their birthdays, Christmases, Thanksgiving. They see her other friends that she might have gone to school with, or her other friends that are now getting married, her other friends that are now having children of their own. And the couple six is also living their lives. Do you understand the kind of torture that is? 
do you understand how somebody could lose it and say, let me take justice into my own hands? I say that because I'm a mother. And I am very calm and very in control. You will never ever see me behaving disorderly outside or in public. But don't hold your breath if it came to Adrian. And so, with the two year anniversary, Miss Shalamondra Robinson announced that she is suing the Justice Department, the FBI, as well as the Cabo Six for the wrongful death of her daughter. About time too. And why the Justice Department? Because, and the FBI, because there was no show of urgency for this, for this death. For the first time, I'm actually seeing, watching, reading how the Shanquilla Robinson case is finally making national news in the United States. I am here in the United Kingdom. I live in London. This was why this story hit home for so many people. Because a young girl went on holiday, a healthy, beautiful girl in the prime of her life. She wasn't sick. There was no indication of anything. She left and she never came back. She never came back to her family. She never came back to the community, to her life, to her world. And you see, to show you how powerful, how beautiful and wonderful Shanquilla is, so many other lives have been destroyed because of how she was taken from them. What do you expect the mother to do? What do you really expect her to do if not to sue? Really and truly, if it was your daughter, if it was your sister, your mother, what would you do? Instead, you have Dajane Jackson on camera because when they were attacking her, they were filming the attack. And that is how it got leaked. The monstrosity of it, the heinousness of this, it, take, it puts chills down my bone because you only wish that somebody could have heard her to save her. Do you know how frightening that could be? Your mind is completely thrown off. It's one thing to get attacked and find some kind of way to defend yourself. Can you imagine being naked? And can you imagine being attacked by the people that you came to visit and have a holiday <laughs> extraordinaire with? Can you imagine how frightened she was? And it wasn't a knife, it wasn't an ammunition, it was fists. Can you imagine the anguish, the pain, the fright? That's why she deserves justice. That's why she gotta have justice. I was so determined. And it hasn't left. So here we go again. We have to get justice for Shankwela and we have to get justice for her family and the Cabo Six have to be taken into accountability. It doesn't make sense to me how none of them have been called in. How the FBI said that their findings on Shanquela was inconclusive. 
I understand English. I understand what inconclusive means. But you didn't give me closure. What does that mean in the grand scheme of things? Is inconclusive how? We know she passed away in Kabul. You're talking about the time, okay. Well, we know the rooms because we can match the villa to the rooms in Kabul. We know that happened at that time because that was when Shankwela went. If you're talking about the fight, again, that was when Shankwela went to Kabul. She's not been to Kabul with these set of people before. Even if there was an autopsy over there, you can tell from what you've gotten back here unless there's something that the FBI doesn't want to tell us. How can they not have brought the Kabul 6 in? How could they not have... How could they not have taken the clothes that the Kabul 6 brought to the mother's house and said, these are your daughter's clothes? This girl died, and we have to know why. We have to know why. So, I would really appreciate it if you truly subscribe, because there's power in numbers. And that's another thing. When I did this episode, finally, I got dressed in red. It's my favorite color. And I went out. By the time I got home that evening, about eight, nine, it had hit one million views. And I had acquired 300,000 followers. They were not following me, they were following the story. They are following the story. So you see, I can't let it go because I'm in debt to Shankwila. I am in debt to her. And this will be ongoing for me. For always. Until she gets justice. Then maybe I will be able to let this go. Until then, I cannot. Please subscribe, please hit the notification button, and I will see you sooner than later. All of my love.